seventh floor with a wheelchair stat. Orderly to the seventh floor. Robert, I'm surprised to see you here. Any special reason? Just routine, Steve. I'm looking after our visiting benefactor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good morning, Chris. Oh, good morning. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. I think the VIPs are about to arrive. Yeah, limo drove up just as we arrived. Oh, oh, you're right. Good morning, Mr. Cassidyne. We're all so delighted that you're here. Oh, thank you. Well, if you're ready, why don't I show you directly to the boardroom? Yes, thank you. I'm quite ready. All oh, right, this way. Dr. Perez, report to My fingers? Cross everything. Yes. Stavros just arrived. With entourage? Right. Steve's taking me to the boardroom for the presentation. Okay. What happens after this presentation? Well, he said he's leaving town. All we can do now is hope that he does. should be over by now. Why hasn't Robert called? Because the presentation can't be over. The last time we called, they were just starting. But that was hours ago, Luke. Ten minutes, tops. I'm sorry. I guess I'm just a little eager. Oh, it's okay. I'm glad you're eager. Once his character is out of town, our lives are going to change. Well, at least we're consistent. How so? <laughs> Seems like our lives are always changing. Yeah, <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> well, at least this time they're going to change forever for the good. Are you hungry? Yeah, but uh, we really can't do anything about it. The housekeeper said that we were out of absolutely everything. Didn't she order anything? Yeah, she did, but who knows when it's going to be delivered. Well, I'm starving. Me too. Tiffany's supposed to bring a cake or something by. Mm. Uh, Angel. Hmm? Do you mind a suggestion? Anything. Staring at the phone is not going to make that call come any faster. I know, it's just that I'm so excited to see all those people, you know, to really see them, to talk to them. Well, it will happen, darling. Believe me, it will happen. I did see some of them, you know, before, but uh, I was afraid to make myself known. Uh, who did you see? Oh, Claudia and Brian and Amy. <laughs> It was all I could do not to rush over to her and give her a big hug and catch up on two years of Miss Gossip. <laughs> <laughs> That's her specialty. You get a chance to do that. You will. Oh, there's just so many things that I want to do. I mean, even just going over to Kelly's and having a bowl of Irish stew. Just walking on the waterfront with you. Hey, wait a minute. Do you mean I get sick and filling to a bowl of mystery meat? <laughs> no. Of course not. Oh, in Beecher's Corners. You've got to promise me that we can go to Beecher's Corners. I hereby promise you anything you want. Anything. I just hope it comes true. It will. If Helena Cassidyne can let you go, why shouldn't Stavros have the same good taste? There are a lot of reasons why he might not. Like what? 
once he gets his mind set on revenge, it's going to be much worse than anything she might do. Oh, wait, Laura, don't go off on me now. We don't know... We don't know that he's thinking of revenge. But we don't know that he isn't, Luke. That's right. Well, we will know as soon as Robert calls and says that he's on that plane. And in presenting to you the Greek marble for the cornerstone of the new Casadine Institute, Helena Casadine quite specifically chose an Ionic piece from the Archaic period. And that is 600 to 500 years before the birth of Christ. The marble once crowned the eastern wall of the temple at Ephesus. And this magnificent temple was, most of all, a center for healing. I think it's therefore appropriate that it now crowned the new Cassidine Institute to be built here upon your university ground. Mr. Rooney has very kindly shown me the plans for your building, and I must say I was most impressed. I know that it would be Mrs. Cassidine's fervent wish that the marble serve to inspire all those who study here to truly learn the art of healing. All healing. And I choose the word all quite deliberately, ladies and gentlemen, because that's the other half of my presentation to you today. Mrs. Cassidine has authorized me to inform you that her restriction, committing your new institute to research only the medicinal values of carbonic snow, has now been entirely removed. She feels, and it's my honor to convey her feeling to you, that the Cassidine money would be better served by funding any research that your board chooses. This, we hope, will be to the greater benefit of your hospital, your university, and to your enchanting city of Port Charles. <laughs> Isn't this the most gorgeous thing you've ever laid your eyes on? What is it? It's a chocolate mousse pie, of course. Oh, and it looks so heavenly, I just had to buy two. It's two. <laughs> You're planning to feed an army? Your clothes. Oh, by the way, has uh, Robert called about the Cassidons yet? No, we're still waiting. Well, when he does, get ready for an onslaught, darling. I am going to call all of your old friends, everybody I can think of, your friends, your family, half of Fort Charles. Call them about what? I'm going to call him about the party, of course, darling. The very single second that Robert says that the Cassadines are gone for good, people are going to start flocking in here in droves. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a wonderful idea. Yeah, if Robert calls, and I'm sure he will. Uh, listen, I think I'll take this to the kitchen. Oh. Good idea. <laughs> mm. Tiffany. Yes? There's something that I want to ask you about. Oh, yes, anything, darling. You were with the Cassidines. Did you ever meet Stavros? No, I never did, but I tell you what, I heard about him. So much, in fact, I felt like I really knew the guy. What did you hear? Well, for one thing, Victor was really in awe of him. What did he say? Well, I remember... I remember he said something about calling him... a piece... a piece of beautiful steel. I mean, at the time, I thought that was a rather odd choice of words. It's accurate. He's a very handsome man with a very cold heart. What else did Victor say? Well, he was Helena's pet, but I guess you figured that out yourself. Oh, yes. Definitely. He could be charming or he could be lethal. And somehow that seemed to appeal to her. Sounds rather fascinating. Not really. But he definitely wanted you. He was obsessed. Obsessed? I, I'm not sure I understand what you mean by that. I always knew that he was fully capable of loving me or of killing me. I mean that. That's why I'm so worried now. But why? Because now that he knows that he can never have me, nothing will stop him. Oh, Laura, don't you think maybe you're just imagining that? No. He would rather see me dead than happy with Luke. Well, I certainly hope you're wrong about that. I'm not. Believe me, I, I spent enough time with him to know. I know how his mind works, and he's never going to leave this town without me. Well, good heavens, if he doesn't, I certainly don't know what Robert and Luke are going to do. 
I'm afraid to even think about that. Excuse me, Mr. Castle. Yes, Commissioner. Captain Ramsey and I would uh, consider it a personal pleasure to escort you to the airport. The official police limo is waiting outside. Well, that's very kind of you, but uh, I have my own limousine. Actually, I've taken the liberty of dismissing your car. Oh? Also, we transferred your luggage to one of the police cars. Well, that wasn't necessary. Well, it's the least we could do to a man of your distinction. I deem it a personal privilege to drive you in my car. And your friends here can drive along with me in another police car. Well, you're really so very considerate. Considerate a pleasure. We've had all the traffic cleared between here and the airport, and just to make sure there's going to be no trouble, I'm going to wait to see you on that plane myself. Shall we? Excuse me. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you ever so much. Goodbye. Well. So far, so good. I think Robert handled that very smoothly, don't you? Stavros will probably smooth himself. Oh, stop. You make me so nervous when you say those kind of things. It wasn't only smooth. He's very smart. And he's extremely slippery. Well, he would have to be a, a, a magician to get away from Robert now, right? Mm. Well, but Robert's not going to take his eyes off him until he walks onto the airplane. I'll be happy when he walks off of the airplane, when he gets to its final destination. I know, I know, me too. I just have to do this. I have to tell myself that everything is going to be all right, that this is the beginning of the end of the Cassidines. I'll vote for that. Okay, babe, we're going to go now. I wish I could leave now, too. It's all right. You'll be there soon enough, and you'll have plenty of time with her. Okay. Just think, she's back. We have all the time in the world with her. <laughs> Pleasure, Mr. Scorpio. Thank you very much for all of your attentions. It was my pleasure. It's always nice to know that the Port Charles Police Force will provide me with a taxi service. Although I assure you it wasn't necessary. On the contrary, we felt it was. By the way, when you see Helena, thank her for the gift. I mean, after all, it was the very least she could do. Well, I'm sure coming from you, she'll find that comment most amusing. Thank you again. Have a nice trip. I intend to. Captain, my thanks to you. It was our pleasure. Oh, that's that. Not quite. Hey, come on. Come on, he's boarding. I know. I'm gonna wait right here till I see that plane taxi down the runway and take off. Ben. And only then will I believe he's given up. Yes, sir. Yeah. Luke, we can't stand it one more minute. Uh, what can't you stand and who's we? Ruby and me. We want to see Laura. Oh, Bobby. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, listen, believe me, we want you to see her too, but not yet. Then when? Well, soon. Maybe, maybe real soon. Oh, sure, you'll be the first to know. Honey, I gotta hang up, though, okay? Luke, we're waiting for you to call. Well, that seems to be the game of the day. It's called Wait for the Call. I'll talk to you real soon. I guess you know that wasn't Robert. Do you know what time it is? Yeah, I know what time it is. Stavros should have been gone by now. Why hasn't Robert called? I wish I knew, darling. I certainly hope nothing's wrong. Something must be. I'm really worried now. take off. I didn't think it was going to happen. Frankly, neither did I. sure. Well, I'm still at the airport. I just watched his plane take off. Well, in that case, there's only one thing to say. What? Get over here and let's party down! <laughs> it worked! He's gone! Let me down! Oh, <laughs>
Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to call the entire world and tell them the seclusion is over to come and see our lives. Do it. <laughs> Should I get there? No, no, you stay right where you are. I told Shannon to stick close to the door. Okay. Laura? Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna... Oh, I prayed so hard this is all, but I can't believe it's true. Amy, I can't get over it. You... You... Look at you! Oh, honey, you look great! How did you finally do it? Well, he finally said yes. <laughs> how I got conned into this, I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> well, see how you like these hors d'oeuvres. I made them myself, my oh, dear. Thanks. Oh, I don't want anything right now. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, you look the same. You look Great. wonderful. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> Everybody wants to hold on to you. I know. Les? Les, we Yes. Yeah. Oh. oh. Um, excuse me, love. Yeah. You uh, feel like meeting somebody else? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, well, I don't, I don't, I don't, this is you. This yeah. is really you. I can't believe it's happening. I don't know what to say. Oh, we got so much to catch up on. Listen, um, we have one day. Please give me one day. And what do I do? I'd love to talk. Oh, I forgot, um, the, uh, the family says they're love. Oh, thank you. Here, come on in. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait to see everybody. It's going to be so much fun. This is incredible. I don't think I can remember a day like this ever. It's like, uh, is it happening? Is it for real? Yes, yes Rick, it's real, and it's going to stay real. You must be very relieved. I know we all have that the Cassidyne threat is... Well, well, actually, a relieved is... Is, which just doesn't cover it. When Robert called and said that that plane had left, I felt like I was flying. And I felt the same way myself. I'm just sorry about one thing, and that's the Cassidines got off so easily. As far as I'm concerned, I'd like to see them all spend the rest of their lives in jail. Yeah, so would I. But we could never make a conviction stick. So, you know, it's over now. That's what's important. So are us not forgotten. No. I'll never forget what they did to it. I promise you that. And I'm sure Helena Cassidine feels the same way. What do you mean? I'm sure she'll never forget what I did to her. Uh, Shannon must be in the kitchen. Would you mind taking care of the bar? No, be happy to. Thank you, Rick. Got uh, another introduction for you. Oh, well, I already know everybody. Any problems? None. Case closed. Good. Laura, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Scorpio. This is Holly. I know this is going to sound like a terrible cliche, but uh, I've really looked forward to meeting you. <laughs> well, do you mind another cliche? Their feelings mutual. Luke's told me so much, but... <laughs> I think uh, we could all use a drink, Robert. <clears throat> if you spoke very kindly to Rick, he might fix us one. I'll do something absurd and uh, approach his better nature. Excuse Good me. Idea. Well, if I seem to be staring, it's because I... I never expected to see the two of you standing together. It's like a miracle, isn't it? Yes, it is like a miracle. And I'm very glad about it. Uh, I don't believe this. I know that face. I know that hair. Oh, 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 I'm speechless for the first time in my life. What do you say? Oh, so good to see you. Oh, and Emma. Oh, I don't know if I should cry or scream for joy. Try both. I want you to know that I know exactly what you've been through. Really, Emma? Yeah, I mean, didn't I ever tell you about the time that I lost my memory? Yeah, I know, kid. You told us, and you never found it again. No, I did find it again. And I know that parts of it are wonderful, though. 
losing your memory? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, do you know that there were days on him that I didn't even know who Charlie was? It was the best time of my whole life. <laughs> How is Charlie? You mean after I lost my memory? Uh -huh. <laughs> He's the same old Charlie. <laughs> Laura? Laura? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <Bye. laughs> Me <Michael>. too. <laughs> I have an idea what you're thinking. <laughs> right now? Seeing Luke and Nora together again. Yeah. Brings back a lot of memories. I can imagine. I don't think I've ever seen two people who look so happy. <laughs> Except perhaps for two other people. <laughs> I hope you mean us. <laughs> oh, this is, oh, this is what I've been waiting for. You have to be, this is special. I know you know Mike, but wait, because you don't know him as your very own baby brother, officially. Oh, really? Yes. Hi, Laura. Hi, honey. I missed you. And this is the newest... Oh, I'm sorry. This is the newest member of our family. This is our new family pet, Blackie. Whoa, whoa, wait a second. <laughs> what? Haven't I seen you somewhere before? I mean, did we meet or something? Uh -huh. It didn't take you very long. No, it was at the student center that one day. You had your hair up. You were over there when Luke was there, right? What are you talking about? Well, I saw her over the student center. She was, uh, you know, trying to get into the sandwich machine. She had a little problem, lady in distress, so I had to help out. Ah, and you didn't even know! I didn't even know. I was talking to her. And I, I, yeah, and then I turned around and she was gone. It was strange. <laughs> Well, it's the story of my life, I no. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you something, Laura. I'm glad you're back from the dead. I don't know how much more gambling of hers that we could take, you know. Gambling? Uh, thanks Mother, a lot. Fine, about? friend. Never mind. <laughs> we'll discuss it later. Right now, all we have to say is, you cost me a lot of money. And it's past history. <laughs> we just forget all about it. Oh. Uh, now that I got a big sister, can I have some punch? I got some punch saved for you, and it's just the right kind of punch. It's a special punch. Sure, it's probably just pop. Hey, pop's <laughs> fine. Put hair on your chest. Don't worry about it, buddy. Or, or... <laughs> Why do you keep crying? <laughs> I was talking to Luke about you today. I was saying how much that I wanted to see you again and just hang out in the diner hall. <laughs> Come by any time. It's just the same. You're always in our thoughts, Laura. I don't know. What else can I say? Except, though, I brought you a surprise. Oh, well, I've had a lot of surprises today. I'll bet that you have, but this one's really special. When Tiffany called me, she said to come right over. At that moment, someone was delivering my order of eggs for the day, so I brought someone with me. <gasps> oh, 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 this is too good to be true now. No. I prayed every single day, every single day for the Lord to bring you back to us. Now my prayers have been answered. Mine too. Did you bring Wit with you? No, darling, but he'll be here a little bit later. You know, it's funny, Luke and I were just talking about the both of you last night. We were reminiscing about our honeymoon on your farm and how we completely destroyed that place. I laughed so hard that I cried. Well, Wit and I have laughed about it, too. Oh, Laura, darling, you don't know how good it is to see you. I can't believe it's true. Thank you. Oh, come here. No. Yeah. Here. Oh, hello. hello, love. Congratulations, my darling. Oh, thank you. With Wit. Well, I had to leave him at the farm with oh. Bessie. Oh. She's going to have another calf. Oh, oh wasn't that great? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, speaking of calves, I think some of these people are going to get pretty hungry for the hamburgers. Oh, yes. Oh, 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 what a terrible thing I said. Oh. <laughs> Promise me that you will grill it on the charcoal out back, okay? I've been dying for a hamburger grill. Wait, it's December. I know. Okay. <laughs> we'll grill it on the <coughs> out back. Oh, we're grilling it out back. Man, we're having it in the end of summer. Go do it. All right, you guys get the plates and the fork. Okay, all right. Rose? My pleasure, sir. Thank you.
I wish you could see your face when you look at Luke. It's just indescribable. No, there's a word for it. What? Love. I love him so much, Mom. No, I know. I know. Sure. I can't believe I'm home. Barbecues in December, I don't believe it. Shank, shank, shank of the evening. Hamburgers to spare. Party. I mean, we had a ball. It's too bad that you weren't with us, you know? No, I, I think you mean Labor Day. I do. That was like last, sometime in July. I think it was the 4th. Yeah. Yeah, I think the 4th. The 4th, yeah. You know what I really missed? It was Christmas time. Oh. Uh. There wasn't a Christmas Eve that Whit and I didn't think about you and Luke and drink a toast to you in our own cider. <laughs> You don't remember anything at all, right? Or shouldn't I ask? Uh, you mean when I had amnesia? Well, you can ask, but actually I can't answer because I don't really remember anything. We got burgers are plenty out there. Uh, Luke is just cooking up a storm. Uh, well, I'm starving. I think I'm going to go get another burger. Oh, I'd love one. Okay, you bring me one thing. Laura! <laughs> Before you go, can I say something? Sure. It's, uh, uh, Blackie, what's it called again? A toast. A toast, that's it. Everyone, I want to make a toast. Stand up here. Okay. Even if mine's just cherry soda, I want to make a toast to my new big sister. Oh, my God. Thank you, Can I get you a hamburger? Yeah, get me one, please. With everything? Everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. It's the happiest day of my life, and I'm blubbering like an idiot. <laughs> well, I've been blubbering for three days, and the way I figure it, Rube, is who has a better right? <laughs> right on. <laughs> Is that you, Mrs. Mayor? Yes, it's me. I'm starving. Are you really? Uh -huh. I've got one here for you right here. Without the bun. One little bite. No, 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 no. Take me. Take me. Mmm, good. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're burning them. Oh, sure. <laughs> Burn me. Burn me. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a sloppy eater. <laughs> They're on fire. Oh, 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 there goes poor Charles. Woo! <laughs> 